Tuesday, I'm Lester Holt for all of us at NBC News. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry, baby. Good night. <laughs> Yes, that is Lester Holt's Labradoodle Lucy getting a little jealous when she saw him holding another dog. Well, Lester has made his way out of the newsroom where he anchors, of course, NBC Nightly News to join us at Universal Studios. Yeah. Lester, Lester, we, we know uh, you spend all your time at New York where it's it's really cold out here. We just want to show you how we do winter yeah. here in L.A. Welcome. Listen, this is, uh, we, you know, we came out, a bunch of the team came out to Nevada for the yeah. debates, and so many of my staff, like, why do we do the news in New York? <laughs> right. you know? A lot of them came here to LA with me and like, why can't we do this on a regular basis here? I actually forget it's winter until we go back east. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, I, you know, I was saying, because I'm from California, so no, this is spring. This is the beginning of spring here. We won't see spring until, you know, May. That's so funny. That's and so funny. your kids, do they love to come out here? Your sons, by the way, two sons, and one of them just worked with Mario, yeah. following Step in your for footsteps. The, for the tree lighting, yeah. They, uh, well, both of them went to school out in California. Pepperdine. So they, so they know. Pepperdine, the other one was up at, up at Stanford. But yeah, Stefan, uh, anchors the news, the 4 o'clock and 11 o'clock news at WNBC in New York. So he's actually in the same building with me, which is just a just That's a hoot awesome. when you're on the elevator. Like, hey, Steph, what's up, man? You That's know? so funny. Do you ever meet for lunch or go to the commissary? I, I can, occasionally, yeah, we'll go to the commissary or maybe dinner, you know, because he's got to stick around for the 11 o'clock news. And, and uh, he's got this big heart, which is so fun because... He was never one of those, as a teenager, he was never one of those teens that was embarrassed about, you know, their, their dad. So we'll be talking about in the elevator lobby and like, well, I got to go get ready for my show. Yeah, me too. And I love you, Dad. Oh, oh that's like, great. It's, I love that. It doesn't get much better. You, you must be so proud of him. Yeah. And it's cool because I've seen you guys toss to each other. Yeah, so, sometimes <laughs> we'll do, we'll do pr uh, promos where I'm actually on their set to talk about what's coming up next on Nightly News. And he'll introduce me. And, uh, and everyone's going to slip in. Okay, thanks, Dad. Oh, that's <laughs> so cute. Oh, I love that. you got to have like a special signal. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to one day do that with my, my son, Dominic. Right? Really cool. Or Sonny. Or Sonny. So we never know. Sunny out and, and my other son is having a terrific career in, in finance in New York. So it's great to have them both close. So, so close. successful. Yes. And then your marriage. 35 years marriage? Is yeah, that Yeah, going on, uh, yeah, 36 years. Look at that. Okay. Awesome. So everybody says, what's the key? Is there one thing you could pinpoint down that makes it work? I think it's laughter. We're, we're, st we're still very silly people. And, you know, they get you. You know, through some you know, hard times sometimes, and uh, uh, but we still have this ability to laugh and be really corny and uh, you know puns and just uh, I think that's the secret. Laughing, I think, is key. Yeah, yeah it really, totally. is. it's yeah. so, so important. And uh, we talked about your kids. We saw your adorable uh, Labradoodle. We know you're a big dog guy. Um, the Westminster Dog Show. Are we going to see Lucy trotting around on stage? I don't know. You know, I, I actually uh, was host of the uh, for a couple of the dog shows. So I, I remember, you know, the pressure of That's that. Prestigious. Of, of it. It's prestigious, <laughs> and people take it very seriously, and, and it, as they should. And you learn about all these different dogs. But I don't think Lucy qualifies. She's an Australian Labradoodle. I don't think that's considered a breed. But you know, not I would, yet at least. I, I, I wouldn't let her go. Anymore. And do you recognize this guy from the movies, Mario? I bring it up every time you're with me, Lester. The Fugitive. He reported on Dr. Richard Kimball like nobody else. Do you remember my line? No, what was it? It was something. Come on, officer. How many one armed men are there? That was my... <laughs> hey, that was good. And that, and that was my ad lib. Really that was my ad lib. That was your ad lib? So this was a. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this, that. The scene was at the, at, near the end of the movie, and they've had the big you know, yeah. altercation at the, at the uh, hotel. And he's coming out. Yeah. And, you know, the director said, guys, you're reporters. Do what you know how to do. And I remember one take, he comes out and. Um, Harrison Ford and I and I said, uh, "Why'd you kill your wife?" And he, and he stops and looks at me, oh, which gosh. wasn't the script. And I didn't kill my wife, and I'm like, <laughs> "I didn't know you were going to answer me." They, that didn't make the uh, that's make so the final great. cut. Didn't he say something great to you afterwards, though? I thought y'all had like another moment. I mean, that's Harrison Ford. I it thought was, that was the coolest. I, he story. probably doesn't remember me, but I was, it was a huge deal. And I just remember we did that pickup shot. It was uh, it was almost summer at that point, yeah. but, but it was a winter movie, so we're in coats and we're all sweating yeah. to death. But uh, like your method. Yeah, that's one of my method actor. You're like the Marlon. Brando yeah, 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 like, <laughs> think cold thoughts. One thing I remember from our last conversation is uh, you love music too, and you play bass in a band. Right? I do. Yeah, we uh, the Rough Cuts, which uh, is a, a band of all NBC News uh, employees. A lot of them are editors at Dateline NBC. Oh, hence and cuts. So the, the rough cuts. cuts. Oh, yeah. that's cute. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, we get together. It's been tough, you know, in this political season. I've been traveling a lot, yeah. so I think we've got a rehearsal schedule for next week. What, what do you guys play? Covers? What kind of music? We play a lot of covers and everything. Nice. Rock, a little funk, and and the joke of, of the band is that I was never really a rock and roll guy growing up. Um, 
You're more like a Yacht Rock guy? Well, I, like, I, I love Yacht Rock. I love Yacht Rock. Yeah. What is Lot Rock? Yacht Rock oh, is like, come. Yacht Rock's like some Hall & Oates, some Ambrosia. Okay. Some, okay. some uh, yeah, you know, old school. Like uh, party a boss anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. R&B, so, so we do this band, and the band was really rock and roll oriented. Yeah. And so we started doing these songs that apparently all of America except me knows. <laughs> and like, Psycho Killer. I never heard of Psycho Killer. But, then, <laughs> but then they play it like, bum, bum, bum. You know, it's a great, great bass line. Anyway, yeah. we've been having a ball, and we, you know, we do, uh, there's a, a, a restaurant in New York, a barbecue place, and we're kind of there close to artists and residents. You're the house band. Every few months we'll do like a Sunday night gig there and pack in the house. That's and, fun. Uh, and then on great. Dateline, I mean, we got to talk about this. You're the OG of true crime. Yes. I mean, now we cover true crime. I mean, yeah. this is just exploded. No, we've we been still watch Dateline every uh, We've been every doing week. it for a very long time, and in, in some weird you know, way, it's, it's sad that there's so much material. Um, but there's a fascination, I, and I'm not sure why it's increased lately, but there is this fascination with true crime. And I don't know if it's some makes, validates our own boring lives that, you know, um, but I think there's something about seeing people who could be your neighbors. Right. Or coworkers, you know. I feel like you're investigating things. it yourself, so she knows all the podcasts. My wife yeah. watches it all the time. She says, "Well, I want to know what to do if you ever upset me and how to get it yeah. to get away." With <laughs> well, well, well. Sometimes you know, people will stop me. They're oh, I love you. There's some people that know me for nightly news, and some people that only know me for Dateline. But they'll they'll stop and want to talk. And I, what was the show? It was the one. It was the one where the husband went after the wife. I said, "Well, you can have to be more specific yeah, yeah. than that." <laughs> yeah. Um, that could but, be every week. Yeah, but you know, I think the success of, of Dateline sure. is that we take these stories and and we've brought stories storytelling to a new level. I mean, the correspondents and writers and producers just have a way of weaving these narratives that really draw you in. There's nothing like a true story. And, and yeah. something very exciting, obviously, going down this uh, uh, summer is the Olympics. Oh, yeah. How yeah. do you feel about that? And I like that they've got some new uh, some new events, like skateboarding. Yeah, surfing, surfing is there, right? Surfing. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, well, I'm looking forward. This will be my... I my ten, is it my thank you it's for giving it to right. It'll be my uh, tenth Olympics. It's uh, it's something I look forward to. It's uh, the greatest perk of the job is wow. to go there because what I love is sitting down with these young athletes who nobody knows their name, but for a couple of weeks, every four years, they're on the they're on the national they're on the world stage and right. they're giddy and they come down with their they're medals. They're a dream to interview, right? They yeah. want to talk. They're so and present. it's and it's just fun because you think of them as your own sons or daughters and you just you feel that 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 pride. So looking forward to it. But yeah, but I think I think it's great the Olympics are growing in terms of sports. I mean the world is changing and right. and the world of athletics is changing. and They should recognize that. Yeah, it's time to get united and cheer for cheer yeah. for the team right there. Uh, congrats on the Edward Murray Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, Let's thank you. Everybody. Thank you. I'm, I'm getting a lot of those lifetime awards. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm only 60. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you need me to jam out I'm, the band? I'm still planning on doing this for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, hey, that's young to get but, Yeah, That's but it's awesome. a great honor. Any, I mean, and these days, I think any honor, you know, uh, certainly is, is nice personally, but I take it as an, a recognition of the business and, and journalism and, and free press and, you know, any, any time that we can support that. Uh, in any way, it's an awesome thing. Awesome. Keep doing it. Come yes. see us anytime Always in California, you. Thank you so much. Always I'm thinking every January, Woo! February. There you, you go. You don't even have to ask me a question. I'll just hang <laughs> out. Just come and kick it. Yeah. A big thank you to Lester. You can find him, of course, anchoring NBC Nightly News weeknights on NBC and also on Dateline.